to be talking about how to find your way back to God. The next letter says, I used to be a Catholic. I don't care what religion you are from as long as you're Christian. Now I'm an atheist, and it frustrates me. Seriously, for a person like me, atheism hurts. If Christianity is the truth, then I swear that the truth is all I look for. If the truth will get me out of atheism, then I wish it was so. You said in one of your videos, if my desire is to find the truth, that you will be inclined to help. Can we put that to the test? Smiley face. Well, yes, you can. And no, I can't answer every letter, but I am very glad that I am able to answer yours tonight with scripture okay um obviously um this person is um not happy being an atheist because somewhere deep down inside of them they know that that's not the truth god puts a drive inside of us um to look for him in that passage i just read to you it says that god did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he's not far from each one of us, right? I want to read to you what, what do you need to do, okay? If you want to get back to God, and this person, obviously, they used to be Catholic, um, but they, they want the truth. They want to get back to God, and maybe, maybe you never really knew God in, in your Catholic religion. Maybe, you know, that was never um, anything that led you to God, although anywhere where you hear the word of God, that can lead you to God. You're not happy where you are. You need to get back to where God is, okay? That's the bottom line. That's why you're unhappy. And you want to know how that happens? Okay, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. But what it does take is faith. Go to Matthew 7. It tells you what God's character is, and this is really important. This is who God is. This is a promise that God has given to you. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. You will not be the exception to the word of God. If you have been looking for God, if you feel frustrated, if you're like, well, I've been looking, but I haven't found him yet. Well, hold on. It's not over yet. Okay? You're still here. Understand that. God brought you here tonight. You are looking because the story's not finished yet. If you say, oh, well, I tried that, didn't work for me. Well, it's not over yet. <laughs> Understand that you're looking at this, uh, you're looking at this timeline, you're looking at it in little pieces. God looks at your entire life, and over the course of your entire life, He draws you, He seeks you, He wants you to seek Him. It's very important that you know who God is. If you think that God is just, you know, somebody up there in the heavens, and if you do everything just right, then, you know, he's like dangling this little carrot uh, above your head. Maybe if you could figure out exactly the right path, like a little rat in a maze, then maybe one of these days you'll get the cheese and, and you'll, you'll know God. It's not like that, you guys. God is not trying to make it hard for you to know him, okay? He wants you to know him. And I want you to understand this, that before you ever even have a thought in your head to seek God, God was seeking you. I'm going to read to you Psalm 139, 1 through 16. This is what you need to know about my God, my Father who is in heaven, and his Son, Jesus Christ, who is my Lord. This is his character. This is how much he loves you. David tells us about it because David, he knew God pretty well. He was very close to him. He wasn't perfect. If you read about his life, he wasn't perfect. He had flaws just like you and I. But the thing that set him apart was that God said that he was a man after his own heart. So he gives us a, a testimony here that gives us some insight into how much God loves us. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. 
All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. If you feel like you've been seeking God and that somehow God is not interested, then you don't know God. And you need to keep on seeking because he's going to show himself to you. And this is how he does it. Some of you know Psalm 139, but some of you don't. Some of you did not know how much God loves you, that, that he knows when you sit down and when you get up, that he knows, you know, when you go out and when you come in, and that before you even say something, he already knows what you're going to say. You know, that's how well he is, that's how familiar he is with you. But understand that if you don't know him and he knows you that well, then understand that he has been watching you. Do you understand how lonely this is? Do you understand this love story that's unfolding here? Because he is in love with you and he has been seeking you and he has been watching you. And why is he so invested in you? Because he made you. Look at yourself. Look at how intricately you were designed. Can you deny that you were made with love? Have you ever seen any artist make anything that even begins to compare with the beautiful thing that God made just in your body? Just look at yourself. It's amazing. He gave you spirit and a mind and all these wonderful things. It's an amazing thing how he knit you together in in your mother's womb and how he knew you in that secret place when nobody else knew you. So don't you think for a second that God doesn't care that you're a rat in a maze and that maybe you'll find him and maybe you won't. You've got to understand that before it ever entered your mind to look for God, God was looking for you. He was seeking you. And he says that over and over in the scriptures in Luke 19, 10. It says, For the Son of Man, who is Jesus Christ, came to seek and to save what was lost. So why did he send Jesus? Why did Jesus come? He came to seek and he came to save. See, remember, you've got to acknowledge that there's something wrong, right? Everything is not right. (laughs) Everything is not all right with you. You are not all right. That's why you're seeking God. You're wanting something. You're not happy. You're not satisfied. You have all of these things pent up inside of you that are negative, that make life hard, right? You need to be saved. And only one person can do it. And only one person loves you enough to do it. So you got to start out this relationship knowing that it's not just God out there and, you know, you're lost down here and, You know, maybe he'll be nice enough to let you know him. You've got to understand that he watches you. He, the Bible says he knows how many hairs are on your head. It says that all of your days were written down in a book. You have a certain number of days that were ordained for you. And God wrote them down in his book. He wrote them down. That's how much he loves you. So that's the person that you're talking about. And he brings us through a process of refining our faith in him which is a process where sometimes we don't see him. And I want to show you why he did that. Because you're you're looking at it from your perspective, many of you. You know, some of you are Christians, but you feel like, oh, I'm so far away from God. I don't understand, you know, what I need to do next. I don't understand what I need to do. I think you guys all can relate to this fact that whether you're a Christian or whether you're not, there are times that you just feel like God isn't there, like God isn't hearing your prayers. You're wondering if if all this is just your imagination. or or what's going on and you have to understand why God does that God does not withdraw from you um, ever he doesn't ever leave you but there are times when he allows you to feel a distance between you and him where you don't feel that comforting presence of God he does that on purpose he does it on purpose and not to punish you and not to be mean not because you're an experiment, but because he wants you to now seek him. He sought you. Understand how he went to the ends of the earth. That's how relentless he is. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for your sins by dying on the cross, taking your punishment for you so that his righteousness could then um, be given to you. Okay, even though that you, you've committed all these sins, God can forgive you of that. He did that. Why? Because he doesn't care? No. He's the one that's been coming after you all this time. Now understand, why is it that you can't see him? You can't feel him? You know, he seems far away. I'm going to show you why. Okay, I want to read to you what he said to the Israelites. Um, but concerning Israel, he says, All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. 
Okay, and he goes on to describe how these people, his people, he, he reached out to time and time again. They would always turn back to idolatry. They would always turn back to sin, to injustice, to um, violence and murder and all of these things, serving other gods that are false gods, which God knows is never going to lead to anything good because he's the only true God. He's the one that made the universe and everything else is a phony. He knows that what you need is to serve the one true God and what he needs is your worship and your love. Okay? So this is a God that all day long he held out his hands to a wicked and obstinate people. Understand, he is, is so familiar with rejection. He sent his son who is God. And he came to his own people. And it says his people did not accept him. They did not recognize him. But instead, because he was the light, the Bible says that the darkness hates the light. Because their deeds were evil. And so they didn't like Jesus coming down because then all their evil deeds were exposed. They didn't like that. So you see, so everybody says, they, I want to know God. I want to know God. But see what God has been dealing with all this time? He's been dealing with wicked and obstinate people who he seeks. He seeks them. He pulls out his hands to them. He gives them everything that he has, his own blood. And still they reject him. So what he needs is a people who will come when he calls and who will trust him. Understand, he has sought you and now it's your turn. You need to seek him. Okay? What do you believe based upon? Are you going to believe? What? If God comes to you and gives you a great big feeling all the time, then you're going to believe? Well, what happens when that feeling is not there? It's just like being married. Okay? Are you, are you a, a faithful spouse, someone who really loves the person that you're married to? Or are you an adulterous person? Well, it's really easy when you're feeling like you're in love to be faithful, right? Oh, you, you've got all the great gushy feelings going on and all the excitement and all that stuff going on. But what happens if that person has to go away on a trip and you can't feel that comfort anymore and you can't hear the sound of their voice and you don't have them right there. You feel like they're watching everything that you do. What do you do when they're away and they're not there to satisfy your need for those feelings? Well, if you're an adulterous person, then you'll run off and you'll sleep with somebody else. If you go through a tough time in your marriage, if you're an adulterous person, you'll run off and you'll find your emotional fix or your sexual fix somewhere else. And that is what God says it's like when his people turn to idols. And that's what he's been dealing with all of these years is a people who he pours himself into and he seeks them. And yet they always turn away to other lovers. So what is God doing now? He has made a way through his son when we were enemies of God. He made a way that we would be reconciled to God. And now he gives us a chance to seek him. Okay. And he's going to know who loves him because he sought you. And now it's your turn. You're going to seek him. God is looking for a bride for his son, Jesus Christ, a pure bride, one that is without spot or wrinkle. That doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect in everything you do. What it means is you're going to have a perfect love for Jesus Christ and for God. We're going to trust God. That's the difference. That's the new thing that God is doing. He's creating a people who will trust him. So, yeah, you have to have those times. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to have to have those times where you don't feel God. You've got to be able to believe him based on his word and his promises. Okay? If you can't believe him based upon his word alone, if God's word, the God that made you, look at yourself. If that is not enough evidence for you, if, if the word of God that created you the word of God that calls the, the, the sun to come up every morning, to go down every evening. The word of God upon which the foundations of the earth are, are laid. If you can't trust in that word, if you can't believe his promises, even when you don't feel anything, then you're, you're never going to be a chaste bride to him. Because he has to be there watching over you every second, or else you're going to run off in disbelief and try to find somebody else or some other God or some other belief system, something else to fill that void that God was meant to fill. If you're going to be adulterous, you're going to cheat on him. Okay? So he's looking for somebody who, when they don't feel God, based upon the fact that he made the world, <laughs> based upon the fact that you can see his character and the things that he made, based upon his word and his promise, that they will believe that. Okay? So you have a choice today, whoever you are. You can be somebody who flounders around and says, well, I just don't feel God, I just don't know, you know. And then like the Israelites who, who fell in the desert and didn't make it to the promised land, 
Only their children made it because they didn't trust God. They didn't believe God. Whenever they got thirsty, they're like, oh, no, God doesn't love us anymore. I'm thirsty. I'm parched. What are we going to do? God's going to leave us to die out here. And they started accusing God. See? We should have stayed in slavery in Egypt when God rescued them through the Red Sea. You can be like those people if you want to, or you can be extraordinary in the sight of heaven because do not think for one second, just because you are an atheist or because you are a Christian that can't feel God, do not think for one second that all of heaven is now watching what you do. This is the epic story. This is the the destiny that, that God has for you. It is a great and amazing story that you are a part of. This is no small thing to be chosen of God. To be a human being called to be part of God's body, to be part of God's bride. That is no small thing. And it says all the powers and the authorities and the principalities and the heavenly realms are watching you. They're watching to see what you're going to do. Because it is an extraordinary thing in God's sight to find somebody when he holds out his hands and when he seeks them. That they will love him back. That they will respond to him. As he said in Isaiah 1, 18 through 20, he said to his people, come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. There is a judgment if you reject God. And that is that you get to live the rest of eternity without him. Without any source of life, of light, of goodness, of compassion, of anything good. That's a place called hell. You need to cry out to him, and you need to obey him. Jesus said, how do you know the truth? Okay, Jesus is the truth. How are you going to know him? It's very simple. He said, if you hold to my teachings, if you obey my commands, he said, then you're really my disciples, and then you will know the truth. And the truth, who is Jesus, will set you free. (laughs) 